Hey guys, it's Jim, and I'm back from traveling, and this is my nightmare rectangle. Ooh, I was scrolling the nightmare rectangle on Saturday night, and I saw this specific post, along with the typical collapse of society that you see on these things. Jason Isbell is like a four-time Grammy Award-winning uh, Americana country artist, great guitar player. He posted this on Twitter saying, Hey American Airlines, why wouldn't you let me carry my guitar on this flight in this case? My friends on the same flight sent me this photo of your coat closet after everyone but me had boarded, so I can see there's plenty of room. It's a 1960 Strat. And I'm flying Austin to Nashville. And I thought to myself, man, if like a career professional musician, proper guy, you know, can't get his 1960 Strat as a carry-on on American Airlines, what chance is a guy like me going to have as a musician trying to do that? And so I looked at the Twitter thread, and I saw there was all sorts of other musicians chiming in. There's guys like... Joe Bonamassa, Andy Wood, Lyle Lovett, Leroy Parnell, Amy Mann, uh, Chris Eldridge, Jamie Art, all these great guitarists and musicians. And they all had essentially similar stories of saying, you know, I've had trouble with American Airlines allowing me to carry on my instrument as well. I thought, man, it'd be good to talk about some of this because actually last week, I also happened to fly with the exact same airline, American Airlines, and I flew with a guitar as a carry-on. I flew with this. Boom. This is my uh, Mario Martin T-style guitar. Bolt-on, Fender-style guitar. Great guitar. Super light. Lights guitar owned. Um, I flew with this, and I didn't fly with it in a gig bag. I did something rather unconventional that I saw online. I saw Julian Lodge. But he posted a picture of this trick that he got from Ron Ellis, who got it from Danny Gatton, of taking a Telecaster apart and sticking it in a bag and sticking the neck in a tube and essentially carrying that as a carry-on. It kind of stinks to have to put your guitar together on the gig, but you have a lot less uh, to worry about while traveling with the guitar. You know it's always in your sight and you can make sure it's taken care of. So I did something very similar. I went to my local arts and crafts store and I bought this kind of portfolio tube. It's made for carrying blueprints and posters. It's adjustable in length, but you can twist the cap off, stick the neck down in there, boom, you got a place to store your neck. And then I took the body, and I'll, I'll post pictures of all this stuff so you guys can see, but I stuck the body inside my small you know, North Face uh, backpack here. It fit perfectly. And then I just kind of stuck the neck in here like so. Carried it, boom, on my back. Had no problems getting through TSA, getting the guitar on the plane and in the carry-on apartment. So what I did is when I got on the plane, I took the tube off the backpack, stuck it in the overhead bin, and then I stuck the backpack with the body in it just underneath the seat in front of me. It was always in plain sight. I could see it. I knew it was not getting banged around by other suitcases and stuff, so it was good. This actually worked out really well for me. And the reason why I did this, this is the, the linchpin. You know, normally I would take my mono case, my guitar, stick it in my mono case, and, and just carry it on and do the same thing that Jason was trying to do. But I was flying out of a smaller regional airport, and they have these smaller puddle jumper planes. And you can't stick a full-size guitar in the overhead bins on those planes because the overhead bins are too small. What you have to do is you have to give the airline essentially your guitar and they stow it away underneath the plane with all the other suitcases and stuff during the flight and then you know you get it at your next layover and then you can go on the big plane and carry your stuff on but for that specific reason because I was flying out of a smaller airport I didn't want to stick my guitar underneath the plane in a in a mono case I just didn't trust it and so rather than risk anything that's why I chose to kind of take my guitar apart yes that is a lot more, yes, that is a lot more work to do, but in the end, it ensured the safety of my guitar, and I knew it was in good hands. So something to consider, like for my specific situation, it worked out really well. I wouldn't want to do that all the time, but like I said, in this particular case, getting on the smaller plane, I felt more comfortable doing that. So that's why I did that. I think it's a cool trick. I'd like to share it with anybody who has Fender-style guitars. Obviously, it's only going to work with a Fender style guitar that has a bolt on neck. The particular tube, portfolio tube that I got, unfortunately would not fit my Strat. I had actually practiced all the tunes for the gig with this Strat, which I love by the way. But the tube, 
diameter is a little too small for the headstock of the strat to fit in. So I couldn't take my strat. I even thought about taking my two guitars apart and putting the tele neck on this just for the gig, but I didn't do that. I just said, I'll just take the Telecaster, it'll be fine. And the Telecaster worked great. But if you're going to use a Strat, try to find a tube that has the right diameter. Other thing that's of note that you guys might find interesting is that to fit the Telecaster headstock inside my tube, I actually had to take two of the tuning machines off. I took the Big E tuning machine off and the A string tuning machine off. And what I did is I just unscrewed the screws that hold them on, took the tuning machines off, put the screws back into the headstock just so I didn't lose those and stuck these in a small plastic bag inside my backpack that also had the strings. I even reused the exact same strings that I had on the guitar before I, before the flight because they were pretty much new and I knew they were already stretched. And so when I got to the, the gig, I just took the strings, put the guitar back together, stuck the strings on there and it uh, stayed in tune really, really well. I wanna give you guys a preview of some of the videos that will be coming down the pipeline. I'm gonna start working on a Univibe a comparison video where we compare the Sabadius Funky Vibe, the Fractal Audio FM3's Univibe, and Astrime Mobius's Univibe sound all together. I think you'll learn a lot from it. Oh, also, I did use the Fractal Audio FM3 on that gig in Seattle and it worked out really well. Yesterday, Fractal Audio updated the firmware for the FM3's. They now have uh, firmware version 6, I believe, and it's in beta. And they added some new drive pedals. They added a Klon drive, a kind of a hot cake style drive. I think they added the Andy Timmons style halo delay. Uh, they added some new cabs with new speakers. They added a two rock cab, which is great. Like a 212 two rock cab. They added a, a Vox 212 cab with greenbacks. That was one of the things that was actually missing. And they added some, they updated some other uh, modeling features in this and added a set list feature. I think I might make a video about that eventually. It's really cool. I just updated this last night and played with it some. I'm really digging this. It sounds great. And lastly, uh, I'm redoing my pedal board. My pedal board, hold on, I'll get my pedal board for you. I wanna show you guys this. This giant monstrosity is my pedal board, right? And I have a smaller pedal board. I'm struggling to hold this up because I don't use my apps. And this is requiring me to use my apps. Ugh! So this giant thing, it's a Pedal Train 3. This is my current pedal board. I have a smaller pedal board back here somewhere that has some other pedals on it. And I have random pedals about that I want to get on a pedal board, but obviously this is too cramped. So I bought a new pedal board and I also bought a nice switcher and I'm gonna redo my pedal board completely over. So that's gonna be a video that's coming up soon and I thought it would be fun to talk about why I'm doing that and what I'm trying to accomplish with that sort of thing. So that's gonna be a video that's coming down the pipeline too. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.